All right, so it's nine already. I'm sorry, there's only two of you uh, in the class, okay? But uh, today is actually a very really interesting uh, topic. It's about gallstone. I don't know if you have ever, you know, ever have anyone with uh, gallstone before. All right, so let me share my screen. Sorry, today was just me, nobody else. Uh, let's see. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. All right. All right, so today we're going to talk about gallbladder disease. All right, so can anyone tell me what exactly is a gallbladder? How do you say gallbladder in Vietnamese? Tui mặt. Okay, tui mặt. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's do some uh, warm up questions about uh, tui mặt or gallbladder, okay? So this question I take it from uh, WebMD, uh, which you can also go online. Uh, so these are very basic questions. Uh, for ba for patients sometimes. All right, so the first question is, can you live without your gallbladder? Yes. Okay, all right, and how do you know that? Uh, because its main function is to uh, help her to absorb lipid. Okay. Yes. So, so more and more easier. Uh, easier. So uh, sure. if we cut out our uh, uh, gallbladder mm -hmm. yeah, that that function will be lacking okay uh, and, and I think uh, we can live without it <laughs> yeah so the, the the only way I'm asking is there's a lot of patients walking around without gallbladder <laughs> you know yes. yeah all right so the question is yes uh, you know you can live without your gallbladder uh, so usually after you remove the gallbladder you know uh, you tell your patient to avoid eating fatty food and you know greasy foods um, why why is that Yes, uh, because as I uh, mentioned before, uh, the main function is uh, to have absorbing these uh, fatty uh, molecules. Mm -hmm. uh, so when um, we remove uh, our gallbladder, um, it has no longer served that function. So we should okay. avoid these foods. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll indigestion brings us indigestion. Okay, I mean, thank you, uh, whoever answered the question. Who was who that? I need to know your name. Uh, my name is Nguyen Wang Tung. Okay, Nguyen Wang Tung. All right, great, man. All right, so yes. that's just a basic question. So the next one is, who is more likely to get gallstone? Is it men or women? And mm -hmm. I want somebody else besides uh, Nguyen Wang Tung to answer that. How about you, Yong? Uh, Yong, you want to give it a try? Um, more likely to get gallstone. Yep, uh, men or women? Uh, yeah, women. Yeah. Is that from your experience, or do you know why? Uh, my experience and mm -hmm. uh, in book. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what does it say in the books? Yeah, yeah. Fat women. Uh, yeah, some. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So usually women have more fat um, than men, uh, but you know, there's some men that also have the obese also, but the main reason why is that women have a cholesterol, uh, a more cholesterol due to uh, the hormone called estrogen. So that's why when your patient is, um, you know, on pregnancy, like birth control pill, which is estrogen pills, and also uh, if they're pregnant, where they have the surge in the estrogens, uh, then usually they have more uh, cholesterol in the, uh, in the blood and end up in the, in, you know, in the um, biliary tract. So that's why they end up having more gallstones. Okay. Yes. All right. So next questions. Uh, so these are very simple questions. So a gallbladder attack usually happens in the morning, in the middle of the day, or at nighttime after a heavy meal. Hmm. Uh, should I answer this question? Sure, yeah, you go ahead. Yes, uh, I would choose uh, the last one uh, after a healthy meal. Yeah, all right. Uh, because, um, as I know, uh, our brain uh, secretes some uh, chemicals for cholesterol kidney mm -hmm. uh, after each uh, after we have a meal. Uh, so it will uh, stimulate the contraction of the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. So, 
um, if there is not any gold stall, it is likely to get stuck in that uh, period, I guess. Yeah. I feel like uh, Nguyen Wan Tung, you, I don't think you need this class because I feel like you know a lot about the gallstone. I mean, that's pretty good. Good job, okay? So you, you can wait You can wait until the end when we have the questions. Then, you know, that will be more challenging for you, okay? All right. Yes, yes. All right, so um, basically this, you're right, uh, really after a heavy meal. Uh, so anything with fatty uh, food will stimulate your gallbladder uh, to contract. So that's why usually when you have the gallbladder attack, uh, which is the pain associated with it. All right. All right, so the objective for the class today is we need to understand the anatomy of the gallbladder, not necessarily the anatomy, just the position of the gallbladder, uh, where is it in our body, and the biliary tract, um, and then understanding the different type of gallstone uh, and how it was a form uh, and what's the risk factor associated with it. Um, so, and we need to also understand the pathophys and the condition that related to the gallstones. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the common one, like you know, cholecystitis, uh, colodocal lithiasis, ascending cholangitis. Uh, so all this are basically is, you know, where is a gallstone? Um, uh, and I will tell you like a little bit different between them, how to tell uh, one from the other. And also we're gonna have uh, one uh, case from a, a student. Uh, he's not here yet, but if hopefully he will get on, and then we can uh, sort of you know uh, go through the case together. All right. And then we're gonna do some practice question at the end. Okay, so first uh, we're gonna do the, <clears throat> basically the anatomy uh, of the, uh, you know, the gallbladder. So usually when you talk about the gallbladder, you need to know, uh, you know, the other structures that are associated with gallbladder. Uh, so when you look at a CT scan, the first thing you don't look for is a gallbladder, you look for the liver. Uh, so the liver, it usually sits underneath the diaphragm, which have two lobes, you know, the right and the, uh, the left lobes of the liver. Uh, and be underneath the liver is usually where the gallbladder sit. So that is very important. Uh, first, uh, when you look at the CT scan, you know exactly where the liver because it's the easiest, uh, it's the largest organ, so you can look for it first. And then after that, you can look for the gallbladder. Uh, and then uh, in terms of the structures of the gallbladder and the liver, uh, you have to understand the biliary tract. Uh, so the left and the right liver would drain into the uh, right hepatic duct and then the left hepatic uh, duct. So they all drain together and they form the common hepatic duct, which is this one in the middle. And then the gallbladder would drain into the cystic duct. Uh, and when the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct join together, then we call it the common bile duct. Um, and so that one, if there's a stone that's stuck in the common bile duct, then you will have the problem both with the gallbladder and also the liver. Uh, so you need to know that. And then when you go down, uh, further down the common bile duct, then we join with the pancreatic ducts and they, uh, they both uh, will dump, uh, you know, the bile and the pancreatic juice into the duodenum. Uh, so the duodenum is very important uh, because it's sort of the position of the duodenum uh, and the pancreas is very, it's, it's very important because the pancreas sit on top of the, uh, the common bile duct. So if you have a mass on the, the head of the pancreas, usually, that mass will uh, sort of block the pancreatic duct. Uh, so that's why people would have symptoms very similar to a gallstone that sit in the common bile duct. Um, so that's the first thing you need to know that the uh, pancreatic cancer can also call obstruction in the uh, biliary tract. And the second thing is the, uh, the duodenum. So the duodenum, you can divide it into four parts. Uh, so the first part is the, the bulk, we call the duodenum bulk. So the, uh, uh, the duodenum, it looked like a C. Uh, so on the top, we call the duodenal bulb. Uh, so, and then uh, when it's come down, uh, we call the descendant, which is the second part of the, uh, the, second part of the uh, duodenum. Uh, so that's where the uh, pancreatic ducts and the uh, common bile duct dump the juice into the duodenum or the GI tract. Uh, and when you pass through the descendant, we go to the transverse section, which is the third part of the duodenum. And then you go to the ascendant. Uh, so just remember the structures uh, of the pancreas is sit on top of the biliary tract and remember that the pancreatic ducts and also the, uh, uh, the common bile ducts uh, we join together to form the ampulla of the bater and then it dump into the duodenum. Uh, so and also the, the other thing that we have to uh, sort of understand is that uh, the common bile ducts is right underneath the duodenum. So when you have inflammation in that uh, common bile duct, sometimes inflammation we call tissue uh, next to each other 
uh, to join and they become adhesive. So it uh, kind of fuses the tissue together and sometimes it causes a fistula. So when you hear the term fistula, it means that there's two organs with two different surfaces. Uh, they fuse together and they form a new opening. Uh, so let's say if you have a gallstone in the uh, biliary tract and there's an, another opening into the duodenum, the gallstone will go into the duodenum uh, and then it go travel out all the way uh, from the, you know, the duodenum, the jejunum, and it's going to get stuck in the ileum. Uh, and that sometimes causes problem. Uh, it causes obstruction in the, in the small bowel. Uh, and sometimes people call that, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, uh, they cause the ileus, uh, gallstone ileus. So that's what happened when a gallstone go from the bilious system and it go into the GI tract. Okay. So, um, so next we know the anatomy, the position of the, uh, you know, the gallbladder, uh, which is right underneath the liver. Uh, now we need to know the function of the gallbladder. Uh, so I think we want to say earlier, uh, summarize pretty good about the function of the gallbladder. So technically the gallbladder is not that important. The only function it does is that it store and it concentrate the bile, um, basically. So um, does people know where is bile is secreted uh, or made, uh, you know, what organ make bile? You can use a raise hand function. All right, Raymond, you can go ahead. Yes, uh, bile uh, mm -hmm. produced by uh, the liver. Mm -hmm. uh, in a little tiny cells, uh, I forgot what it's called. It's it's yeah, so uh, liver, so when you talk about liver, it's hepatic, all right? So, uh, yeah, so hepatocyte, uh, liver cells. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, thank you. Uh, so you're right. Uh, so the liver, oh, sorry. So the uh, Hang on, let me just mute um, my a little bit. It's, uh, sorry, somebody. Okay. All right. So uh, the gallbladder is to store uh, and concentrate bile and bile is usually uh, made from the liver. Uh, so after you eat, um, so uh, the bile will be uh, secreted by the liver and it's stored and it uh, sort of stored inside the gallbladder. Uh, and then after you eat, uh, using I mean, proteins of fatty acid that introduce into the duodenum, the uh, release of a, of a hormone called the cholecystokinins. When you see choli, uh, that means bile. Uh, so choli means bile. Um, so when you, whenever you see the choli, mean that it has something to do with bile. And this, the main function for the hormone is to cause the gallbladder to sort of contract. And when it's contract, it will cause the, uh, the bile to secrete into the uh, duodenum. Uh, so if whenever you have a gallstone uh, inside a gallbladder, just imagine in your hand, you have a bunch of stones, right? And when you squeeze the stone, it, it will cause pain for your hand. So it's the same thing for gallbladder. If you have a bunch of stones sitting in the gallbladders, and then when you eat something, you know, like fatty or a lot of proteins, and then your body secretes the, the hormones and they cause your gallbladder to contract, uh, that's when you start having pain. All right, let me see. Okay. Okay, so the next one is a bio. Uh, so how is bio uh, is made? Uh, so basically the bio is made by hepatocyte. Uh, the bio is actually secreted uh, into the little tiny uh, canals, so we call it the canaliculi. Uh, so it's secreted by the hepatocyte and it travels down this uh, canal and we dump into a bio duct. And then this bio duct then go down and then sort of go into the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct and they go into the common hepatic ducts and it travel down all the way into the gallbladder and the store inside the gallbladders. So the composition of the bile is contained bile salt, uh, which is very important because the bile salt, the main function for the, is that uh, it's make the bile become water soluble. Um, so that's why when you have a lot of bile uh, sitting in the, uh, in the gallbladder, it doesn't form the, the stone because it have a lot of bile salt and this salt make it water soluble. And then beside the uh, bio salt, you also have phospholipid, uh, cholesterol, which is a big uh, you know, composition of the stone. Uh, Sometimes uh, if you have a lot of cholesterol, it's, it causes the, uh, the bio to become stagnant. And if you, know, if you have a lot of fat in your blood, uh, just imagine, make your blood become like a little bit sluggish. So it's uh, flow a little bit less, 
you know, more fluid, less fluid than a normal uh, blood. So the same thing for bile, if you have a lot of cholesterol in your bile, uh, it just causes the, the bile to become uh, less fluid. So it's sort of, uh, it's very uh, sluggish uh, flow. And so beside the cholesterol, we still have bilirubin uh, and also a big composition uh, of the uh, gallstone when we talk about what type of gallstone it is and also water and ions. Uh, one of the important enzymes that you need to know uh, for the formation of the gallstone is the cholesterol 7-alpha uh, hydroxylase. So this, this enzyme is basically is a limiting step uh, to make an, the bioacid synthesis. All right, so let me... You know, Sorry, I, I, I got to let uh, a couple of people into the class. Uh, okay, so uh, the next thing uh, we're going to look at is the type of gallstone. Uh, so when we say gallstone, uh, just imagine, you know, uh, in your head, uh, the two types of gallstones. Uh, usually there's a lot more type, but uh, on step one, they only test you one type, which is the cholesterol stones, and the other one is a pigment uh, stones. So uh, when you know when when you took a uh, when you look at cholesterol, just think about cholesterol is just fat. Uh, so that means when you uh, do images, you're not going to see it. So if you do a uh, ultrasound or some sort of like X-ray or CT, you won't see it because there's not a lot of calcifications. Uh, there's not cal there's no calcium in it. Uh, so usually just one or twenty percent uh, have calcium. So that's why you can see it on imagings. Uh, so just think of cholesterol is like fat. So you cannot see it on imagings. And there's a lot of uh, risk factors. So any condi condition that causes your uh, blood to have more cholesterol will um, contribute to you, uh, you know, the risk factor uh, for you to form cholesterol stones. So for example, people like we talk about females, so that's why you have more estrogen. You have, have more estrogen, you have more cholesterol. Same thing with Crohn's disease people. Uh, the Crohn disease people, uh, the, the problem is not that they have cholesterol, uh, more cholesterol, it's just the problem is that, uh, you know, it's terminal ileums, uh, which is the way for them to recycle bio acid. Um, so if the, uh, the terminal ileum become, you know, defective, they don't have a way to recycle the bio acid. So they lack bio acid. Uh, so that means, you know, it will increase the, uh, the cholesterol formation. So that's why they have more, uh, more cholesterol stone than other people. And same thing with uh, multiparity. Uh, when you are pregnant, you have more estrogen, so more cholesterol. Uh, rapid weight loss, Native American heritage, this is more just more like genetic, and also advanced age. Um, the only thing I cannot tell you why is advanced age that have more uh, gallstones. Um, that some of them can tell me later. And also the other one is the pigment. Uh, so when I tell you pigment, that means that they have a color. So usually uh, pigment can be a black, or brownish. Um, so just know that it's have colors and also sometimes when on radiograph you can see uh, the pigment stones. So if you if they show you uh, you know a question uh, with uh, both you know a stone that they cannot be seen and a stone that can be seen on checks uh, on the radiograph then think about pigment when you see it and when think about uh, cholesterol when you don't see uh, the stones. All right so and the pigment stone when you think of pigment think of bilirubin uh, like I talked about before. Uh, when you uh, look at the composition of bile, uh, it have you know cholesterol and bilirubin. Okay, so if you have a lot of cholesterol, it become cholesterol stone. If you have a lot of bilirubin, it form the pigment stone. So uh, you know bilirubin comes from the breakdown of your uh, red blood cells. So think about a disease that you know break down a lot of red blood cells, uh, like chronic uh, red blood cell hemolysis. Uh, you know biliary infection sometimes can cause the red blood cell to lyse. Uh, so that's why you have pigmented stones uh, and also alcoholic uh, cirrhosis uh, and advanced age. All right. So gallstone. So let's talk about the first uh, type, which is the cholesterol stones. So uh, first, we have to understand, you know, how how is a cholesterol um, sort of contribute to the formation of the uh, the cholesterol stones. Uh, so cholesterol before it gets to the liver, it can be uh, converted to either bio salt or cholesterol uh, in the liver. So let's say if you have, you know, some function that causes your uh, bile salt to become, you know, defective. So you have more cholesterol with get converted into, uh, you know, become cholesterol in your liver. And that way, the more cholesterol you have in your bile, it causes your bile to become stagnant. And when your 
uh, your bioflow is you know sort of uh, slow down then the stone uh, can form so that's one way for the stone to form uh, so by having more cholesterol in your bio uh, so when you think about gallstone think about the imbalance between the bio salt and also the cholesterol so you can either have a lot of cholesterol or you can have uh, less uh, bio salt okay so same thing about I talked to you before pregnancy uh, you know uh, or you know, contraceptive pills those conditions causes you your uh, hormones, uh, estrogen to stimulate the cholesterol uh, formation. Kim, mom, mom, they don't know. All right. Okay. Uh, sorry. And then you have the progesterone, which is when you're pregnant. Again, uh, you have the surge in you know progesterone and estrogens. Uh, so the progesterone is to cause decrease the bio acid secretion. Uh, again, you know, one thing you have is estrogen is increasing cholesterol, and then you have another hormone kind of cut down the bio acid, and now you have a lot more cholesterol, a lot less of bio acid, which means that you are at risk for forming the cholesterol, uh, uh, you know, gallstone. All right, and then, um, so now we're gonna talk about the clinical pictures of someone with, you know, a gallstone, uh, right? So. First thing is the presentation. So someone with uh, a gallstone uh, come in, the first thing that we hear, you will hear the complaint is a right upper quadrant pain. Um, and occasionally it radiates to the right shoulder. Uh, so I want someone to explain to me uh, why you have the right upper quadrant pain and then sometimes it radiates to the right shoulder. Why is the right shoulder? Anyone know why? Um. Go ahead. You want to? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, as I can uh, recall, mm -hmm. uh, it has something to do with uh, the, the path of the uh, uh, neurons. Uh, it has something to do with the tens, uh, the vagal nerves. If mm -hmm. I'm right, uh, it it uh, travel uh, in our body to mm -hmm. multiple organs. Uh, so it has uh, uh, some association between the gallbladder. <laughs> And then, I don't know, uh, <laughs> uh, a branch of, uh, of nerves travels to the right shoulder, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, good effort, uh, close, but uh, it's not exactly yes. the reason why. Uh, anyone else yes. have any reason why? Any idea? So what, you know, like I remember I told you the location of the gallbladder, it sit on the uh, right upper quadrant, right? So think about the organ next to it, like what is next to the gallbladder? The liver. Okay, you have the liver, and what else? Yom, you wanna, you, you wanna? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, don't be afraid, okay? So let's just walk through, okay? So on top of the liver, what's on top of the liver? The diaphragm. Okay, the diaphragm. Okay, so which nerve innervates the diaphragm? Anyone can tell me. The vagal nerve. No. no. Okay, Ngapan, go ahead. Okay, I, I remember that yeah. is the, 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 t the t 10th nerve. Um, I don't know. Um, the, the diaphragm? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. No, no, not, not okay. a diaphragm, but... Yeah. Uh, What's I don't remember exactly the name. Where's that? We said there is a mnemonic to remember the diaphragm uh, nerve. Anyone knows? Okay, so uh, you already answered. Uh, who, who else is just trying to answer that? So this is the fun of medicine, right? Sometimes you have a lot of... Uh, I, just, I, just I, I just remember that it's okay. uh, related to the referral pain I guess. I, I, it is a referral pain, but what exactly yeah. is referred? What what nerve has been, you know? <laughs> so that's a, this is the thing you have to understand. Uh, you I know. forgot the name in, okay. uh, in English. All right, Mai, you want to answer that? Hi. Uh, what is nerve that phrenic nerve? Phrenic nerve. Yes, uh, but what is a phrenic nerve? What nerve root come out to... Um, phrenic nerves is from the uh, complex. The uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. 
So I'm gonna tell you guys a quick quick way to remember the uh, the phrenic nerve, you know, the diaphragm. Okay. So we just repeat this: C3, C4, C5 keeps the diaphragm alive. Okay. So C3, C4, C5 keeps the diaphragm alive. So the nerve C3, C4, and C5 that's the one that innovates the diaphragm. So if you look at the dermatome for the uh, for the diaphragm, I mean uh, for C3 and C4 and C5 you will see the, uh, the dermatome, which is a skin innovation, right? It's innovate uh, the, you know, from the neck down into the, uh, the shoulder. So that's why sometimes when you have pain, uh, you know, the gallbladder becoming inflamed, it's irritate the diaphragm. And the nerve, uh, the same referral nerve, which is a pain coming off from the C3 and C4 and C5, it's related to the shoulder. So that's why we call it referral pain. Okay, all right. All right, so uh, that's why sometimes people come in and they have this right upper quadrant pain, uh, and sometimes if the inflammation is really bad, it can radiate to the right shoulder, so we cause referred pain. Uh, and the pain is expectedly to be worse after fatty meals. Uh, so if someone come in and you think that it's related to the gallbladder, you ask them about what did you eat before uh, the pain, you know, any uh, recent change in diet. Um, so sort of, you know, change in diet that can cause it. Uh, and sometimes the pain is really bad. Uh, people can have nausea and vomiting also. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to uh, diagnose gallbladder, I mean gallstones, uh, but most often is you use, we use imaging. Uh, so the gold standard for uh, visualize a gallstone is ultrasounds. Not only you can do it, you know, a best side ultrasound, it also is cheap uh, and it doesn't have any side effects to the patient. Uh, even if you do like a radiography, like a, uh, you know, a, a x-ray or a CT scan, you expose patient to a small amount of radiation. Uh, so it's not that good. Uh, so ultrasound is still the best and also the cheapest and also the gold standard. And sometimes you can hear about ERCP and MRCP. So these are you uh, visualizing uh, sort of uh, contrast to help you locate where exactly is the stone so that you can remove it. So the only difference between ERCP and MRCP is that ERCP is endoscopic in that you can go in and retrieve the stone so you can uh, sort of, you know, dislodge the stone. Uh, so you remove the stone, so it's become a therapeutic. So it's a treatment also. Uh, so not only is it diagnosis the gallstone, it's also treat the gallstone. Uh, so MRCP, uh, you cannot treat. Basically, you just use it to uh, diagnose to where exactly is the stone. So the mnemonic uh, to remember the risk factor for gallstones is you remember the five Fs. So fat, fertile, females, 40s, and the fibrates, uh, which is one of the drugs uh, that, that can cause increase in cholesterol. Uh, so just remember the five F, you know, fat, female, fertile, 40s, and fibrates. Okay, uh, so next we can see the images. So uh, has anyone ever seen a gallstone? Uh, through ultrasound. Yes. Okay. So how 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 can you tell it's a gallstone? How do you know that? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So in the ultrasound, mm -hmm. uh, you see a. I don't know. How to, uh, can I speak in Vietnamese? Because yeah, I don't sure. know. Yeah, you can talk in Vietnamese. Viên uh, soi sẽ có cái màu trắng như là xương giống như là bị canxi hóa còn yeah. ở dưới nó thì sẽ có một bóng mờ cản quang yeah sorry okay, that's fine you know the, I'm learning too so uh, you're, you're right so we use a shadow uh, basically uh, to predict where the stone is so you look over here there's a little <coughs> shadow behind the stone so that's how you use uh, ultrasound uh, to kind of locate the uh, you know the stone sometimes the stone is really small you can't see the calcification but uh, the, you know, the radiologists, they read the shadow behind it to, you know, to locate the stone. And then you can also sometimes see it on abdominal CT. So usually people don't use abdominal CT to uh, diagnose a stone, but most, most, most of these are kind of like incidental, you know, somebody order abdominal CT and they just, you know, saw, like, see the stone uh, on the CT. Uh, so you see that little white thing uh, inside the gallbladder, right? Remember I told you the, so you have to locate the liver on the abdominal CT, which is the, this thing over here. And next to it is a gallbladder. And then you see the white thing uh, right, you know, at the neck of the gallbladder, that's a, that's a stone. So anything that calcify, uh, have calciums uh, on abdominal CT, it will become uh, white. So uh, beside the stone, you can also see the aorta. You see that calcification around the aorta? 
So that person probably has some, uh, you know, aortic uh, disease. And then uh, you can also do MRCP, uh, same using the contrast. So basically you see if there's a uh, stone that gets stuck in the biliary tract, then you don't see uh, any uh, sort of uh, contrast in that uh, region. Uh, so on the one on the right over here, you can see the stone in the bio ducts is mostly in the distal common bio ducts. So you see over here, the contract is stopped uh, and you don't see the connection to the outside. All right. Okay, so, uh, so now the complication of gallstones. So why do we care about gallstone, right? So if there's a gallstone and it form and it just sit in the gallbladders, yeah, you know, it hurts when your gallbladder contract, but it really didn't do anything. Uh, so sometimes people would come in uh, and they have this uh, right upper quadrant pain, but they can deal with it. You know, sometimes it just hurt for, uh, you know, 15, 10 minutes and then, you know, it goes away, but nobody really cares. Uh, but when it, that stone gets stuck somewhere else, then that becomes uh, problems. Okay, let's see someone have, uh, Mai, did you raise your hand? Do you have a question? Hello, Mai? you have a question? Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I just don't know how to use this thing. Okay, just so that's, I mean, it's, ra it's raise your hands. I mean, that if you have a question, you raise your hand and, you know, like, I know that you have a question. Okay, all right, so the complication is cholelithiasis. So when you see the cholo, the coli is basically is bio. Lithiasis in English just means stone, all right? So it's a bio stone. So, you know, it made out a stone made out of bio, it's a gallstone. Uh, so, and then the second thing is acute cholecystitis and then cholelithiasis. Uh, so when you see Coli, that's bio. Uh, doco is a common bio duct and lithiasis, which is stone. So you can say it, coli doco lithiasis means that it's a stone that made out of bio that, suck, that gets stuck in the common bio duct. Okay, so coli doco means that it's stuck, it got stuck in the common bio duct. And then we have the acute cholangitis. Um, acute cholecystitis means that it's just inflammation of the gallbladder. All right, and then we have gallstone ileus, like I told you before, when the stone gets stuck in the ileum, uh, terminal part of the ileums, and then we have the gallstone pancreatitis, basically is a pancreatitis caused by the gallstone, and then porcelain gallbladder, which is one of the rare complications, uh, but usually uh, they will test you because there's only one way to treat it, um, and we'll talk about it later. All right, so let's talk about the first thing, which is cholelithiasis, basic gall, gallstone, uh, just sit in the, in the gallbladder, nothing happened. So the stone form in the gallbladder, and like I say, if you put a bunch of stone in your hands and you crush your hands, your hands will hurt. So same thing with the gallbladder, a bunch of stone gets stuck in there, and they just hurt when you, know, when you eat something fatty, it causes your gallbladder to contract, and then you have the colicky pain. So when you hear the word colicky, mean that it comes and go. Uh, so people repeatedly have multiple episodes. Uh, so if someone have gallstone come in and then you ask them, oh, have you had this pain in the past? And if they say have yes, that means that, you know, uh, most likely they have a gallstone that form uh, and they continue to have gallstone form in the gallbladders. So how do you diagnose this? I told you before, right upper quadrant ultrasound, uh, if preferred, uh, sometimes people see it on abdominal CT. Uh, if, the abdo if the right over to, uh, upper quadrant sound is usually doesn't show anything, uh, then you can do the CT or you do the HIDA scan uh, if the ultrasound is not helpful. So the HIDA scan is the same, it's kind of like the MRCP, uh, it's sort of, you know, uh, to see the spread of the contrast. Um, and then if the treatment is elective, uh, cholecystectomy. So when you see the words elective, it means that you don't have to do it. Uh, it's sort of like uh, you can do it if you want to, it's recommended. Uh, and cholecystectomy, so which means that the remove of the gallbladder, uh, the gallbladder. Uh, so sometimes if you have the gallstone, the best thing is to remove the gallbladders. Okay, so the cholecystitis. Uh, so it, again, cholecystitis means it's an inflammation of the gallbladders. So if you have a bunch of stone and your gallbladder keep contracting and sometimes one of those stones will get dislodged and it gets stuck uh, in the cystic duct. Uh, so that's why it's coming from. So cholecystitis, so inflammation of the cystic duct uh, and the gallbladders. Uh, so, uh, so the pain is no longer col colicky because your gallbladder is inflamed now. So you will have constant pain in the right upper quadrant pain. 
so that's the main difference between the cholecystitis versus cholelithiasis is that you have constant pain. And one of the physical exam that can help you uh, differentiate between the two is called a Murphy sign. Uh, and you know, any inflammation would cause you to have a little bit of fever uh, because of the cytokines of release and also a little bit elevated of the white blood cells. Uh, and you diagnose the same way, the right upper quadrant cells, and then you see a, you know, a stone in the system stuff, and you do a HIDA scan, and you see that you know, the, uh, the, um, the contract gets stuck in the gallbladder. It doesn't go out into the biliary tract. Uh, and the treatment for this one is no longer elective. If you have a stone that's stuck in the system duct, you have to remove the gallbladders. Okay, so uh, can anyone tell me what is a Murphy sign? All right, maybe want to uh, explain to me what is a Murphy sign? Yes, uh, a Murphy sign is uh, a physical examination mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you put your hand firmly under the upper right quadrant, okay. uh, just below the the, the, posi uh, the, the the position of the liver, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, you ask the patient to exhale first, okay. uh, and you you press your hand. Uh, a little bit deep, uh, deeper into mm -hmm. their abdominal cavity, and then uh, they, you ask them to inhale. Mm -hmm. And as they inhale, the liver, uh, the diaphragm moves uh, moves down, mm -hmm. as well as the the, the liver and, yeah. and the the gallbladder. So if uh, the gallbladder is inflamed or it is um, uh, irritated, uh, mm -hmm. it will cause uh, the pain when it came into contact with uh, your hand. Okay. And the patient will likely to uh, feel uh, uh, really painful when they inhale. Uh, so that, I think that's the Murphy side. Okay, exactly. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's a very detailed explanation. And I think you're right. Uh, same thing. So I'm going to just repeat it again. So you ask the patient to basically exhale. Uh, so when you exhale, what happens to the diaphragm, right? The diaphragm sort of like, it's sort of like go up. So that's why I pull the, uh, the gallbladder up. Uh, so you put your hand underneath and you tell the patient to like in inspire. When you inspire, your lung expands, so you push the diaphragm down. So if your gallbladder is inflamed, it will hit you know, the tip of your finger and the patient will like jump or stop, uh, you know, uh, stop inspiring. So that's when you know that uh, they have an inflamed gallbladder. But sometimes, you know, when they have the gallbladder is inflamed there, is when you put your finger there, they already jumped sometimes. But that is a more a sensitive sign it's a Murphy sign. Okay, so what happened when the gallstone no longer is stuck in the cystic duct, you know, it's traveled further down. Uh, so it gets stuck in the common bile duct. Now you have the problem called the cholodocolithiasis. Uh, so just remember, just when you think about gallstone, you just remember, you know, where is the gallstone basically? So if the gallstone gets stuck in the common bile duct, that means that no longer it affects your gallbladder, but it also affects your liver. And your liver, you know, it does a lot of function, right? Not only does it secrete the bile, but it also have uh, secrete the bilirubin. Uh, so if you got a stone that's stuck there, um, you know, uh, you will have bilirubin elevated through the roof. So your patient will have jaundice, they have yellow skin. Uh, and when you do the Murphy sign, the gallbladder is still inflamed. So it's still, you know, uh, you still have the positive Murphy sign. Again, you have fever and leukocytosis. That's just because of the uh, general inflammation in that area. Um, but when you do, uh, you know, the, the liver function test, you will see elevated LFTs, uh, and then you, you know, the, the all the signs that show that there's a obstructed, uh, obstructed uh, bio uh, flow. Uh, so that's the only difference between the uh, cholocystitis versus cholodocolithiasis. That is the uh, involvement of the liver. So, chol you know, cholecystitis only affect the gallbladder. Cholodocolithiasis affect the gallbladder and the liver. Okay, uh, so diagnosis the same way you do the right upper quadrant ultrasounds, uh, but the treatment is different now. You have to, you know, you know, get the patient in and get an ERCP. So you want to make sure that the, the the stone is there so that you can remove it. Uh, so remember, the ERCP is both diagnosis and also uh, treatment. So when they see the stone there, you know, they just uh, sort of remove the stone to release the the bio flow. All right. Okay, so um, next thing is a, I think, oh, I think there's a mistake on this one. So like I, like I say, the cholodocolithiasis, uh, 
So when you have, so this one is actually ascending cholangitis. I'm sorry, I didn't change the, uh, um, the title. So basically when you have a stone get stuck in the common bile duct, uh, what it does is that, you know, it creates, you know, a, a ground for bacteria to grow. And when there's a bacteria that grow there, it can cause infections and now things get more serious. Uh, so the only difference between the one, uh, the cholodocolithiasis and ascending cholangitis, now you have infections. And when you have infection, what do you get? You know, so uh, we think about the uh, trachea trias. Uh, so the right upper quadrant pain, jaundice and fever. Uh, so just remember that triad. So you see someone come in with the right upper quadrant pain, yellow fever, uh, yellow uh, uh, skin, and also fever. Then you think about infection that gets stuck uh, by a stone, that gets stuck in a common bile duct. So you think about colodocal, uh, col ascending cholangitis. And you know, if someone have infection, it becomes sepsis, sepsis right? So sepsis you usually have hypertension, alto mental status. So if you add the two signs of symptoms into the triad, uh, we call the Raynaud's pentad. Uh, so those are the signs of symptoms. So if so someone come in with a really, uh, looking really sick, like then you think about ascending cholangitis. Same thing, you do the right upper quadrant cell, but uh, this one is the emergent ERCP. You cannot wait, you have to push the patient into the operating room and do the ERCP to remove the stone immediately. Uh, otherwise the infection will keep spreading. So what's the difference between this one and the last one? Just remember this one have infection. So yeah, remember the infections, yeah, you have hypertension, alter mental status because the patient becomes sepsis, and also you have jaundice and fever. Yeah. All right, so the next uh, complication that a lot of, not a lot of people pay attention to, but it's sometimes it's testis, it's gallstone ileus, and gallstone pancreatitis, and the porcelain gallbladder. So let's uh, go through the gallstone ileus. So again, uh, remember the structures of the gallbladder and the biliary tract. So the biliary tract uh, is sit very close to the duodenum. Uh, so if the stone gets stuck in the common bile duct and you know, the biliary tract becomes inflamed, it can cause a fistula between the gallbladder and the GI tract. Uh, so you know, the stone can get passed through the uh, biliary tract and it go into the GI system. And like I say, there's a fistula between the two uh, then the air inside the GI tract can go back into the uh, into the gallbladder, so that's why you have this, uh, you know, um, uh, air inside the biliary tree. Sometimes we call it pneumo uh, bilia. So pneumo means uh, air, and bilia is a biliary tract. Uh, so that's a very common uh, side effects of gallstone ileus. So the gallstone, we go all the way from the duodenum, uh, go through the jejunum and go to the ileum. Uh, so when the ileum, it gets stuck in the ileocecal valve and it causes gallstone ileus. Uh, again, we can confirm it by abdominal CT. Uh, so as you can see that if the uh, stone gets stuck in the small, uh, uh, small bowel, it causes small bowel obstruction. So everything proximal to it. So you know, all this, uh, the bowel before it becomes distended. And sometimes you can see pneumobilia, so uh, you know air inside the biliary tract and the obstructing stone. It's hard to see, but sometimes you can see it. So you look at the axial scan on the right, uh, you can see the stone right there at the ileus, uh, at the ileum. Um, so that's why you have gallstone ileus, and the only way to treat it is so you have to remove the stone and also get rid of the gallbladders. Okay, so the other uh, the other complication is also gallstone pancreatitis. So you imagine the gallstone uh, not only gets stuck at the common bile duct, now it travels down further where the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct uh, join together. If it got stuck over there, then everything behind it, uh, including the pancreatic duct, become inflamed. Uh, so that's another way that you know, gallstone can cause pancreatitis. Uh, so a mnemonic for acute pancreatitis is, I guess, smashed. And so the I mean uh, idiopathic. The two common uh, cause for, for pancreatitis is gallstone and, uh, and alcohol. Okay, uh, so that's why, uh, you know, gallstone can also call pancreatitis. So clinical presentation is very similar to a acute pancreatitis. Uh, so someone come in with sort of uh, epigastric abdominal pain that radiates to the back. And when they lean forward, it uh, relieves the pain. Uh, and it's, again, uh, they have nausea and vomiting. Uh, and when you do, uh, you know, lap, you, will hear, you see the elevated serum amylase. Uh, so more than three times of the limit. So that's how you diagnose uh, pancreatitis, either by uh, lab or by imagings uh, or clinical symptoms. So the clinical symptom is a abdominal pain that radiates to the back uh, with nausea, vomiting, and relieved by uh, you know, leaning forward. Or you can do so imagings, which is CT or MRI. Uh, treatment for pancreatitis is fluid, fluid, and after fluid. 
Uh, and one thing is that you should know that lactic ringer is better uh, for pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis than normal saline. Uh, so this is actually proven. Uh, so next time you have someone coming with pancreatitis, you know, uh, recommend to get a lactic ringer. Uh, and you have to uh, re replete the electrolyte. Uh, and also pain control is huge because people will have nausea and vomiting and a lot of pain. So you got to give them something uh, for the nausea and also for the pain. All right, so the next one is a porcelain gallbladder. Uh, so what exactly is porcelain gallbladder and why step one always test you? Uh, the only reason why is, uh, is they test you all the time is because of the increase in risk of uh, gallbladder cancer, mostly adenocarcinoma. So if the stone gets stuck in the system for a, lot, a while, but it can come and go, so it causes the gallbladder to become uh, you know, calcified. Just, ima uh, just imagine like the heart muscle, you know, it has to work against the uh, increase in pressure, it become hypertrophy. Same thing for gallbladder, it become obstructive. If it keep working, it become calcified. Uh, so it increases the risk of uh, gallbladder cancer. So that's why they recommend you, if you see the gall, uh, porcelain gallbladder, you have to remove it. So that's why you see on the, uh, ex, uh, on the uh, CT abdominal scan, you can see that it looks like a rim uh, of calcification around the gallbladder. So it looked like a porcelain. So porcelain is like, a, um, it's a porcelain. So you can see the white, uh, like, a chi like China. Uh, so that's why they call it a porcelain gallbladder. Okay, so that's all we have for the gallbladders. Uh, so first you have to know the anatomy, uh, the position of the gallbladder. Remember the relationship of the gallbladder to the liver, uh, you know, the diaphragm, you know, and also the pancreas and the GI tract. Remember how the biliary tract is sitting on top, uh, is very close to the, to the duodenum and also the pancreas. So if you have a uh, cancer or a mass on the pancreas, you can also obstruct the biliary tracts, okay? And then you remember the formation and the type of gallstone. So remember gallstone is, uh, is balancing between cholesterol, uh, bilirubin, and also bile salt. So increase in cholesterol is bad. Uh, increase in pigments or any increase in uh, bilirubin, like, you know, uh, uh, red blood cell hemolysis, uh, anything that increases pigments will increase the risk of forming the stone. Anything that causes decrease in bile salt, uh, we also cause the formation of stone. Uh, and also understand the, uh, the complication of a gallstone. So remember, where is a stone, okay? So if the stone just sit in the gallbladder, then you think about colo, uh, cholelithiasis. If it gets stuck in the cystic duct, then you think about cholecystitis. Uh, so it's inflammation of the gallbladder and the cystic duct. If the stone travel all the way down into the uh, common bile duct, then you have cholelithiasis, which is a, uh, you know, obstruction, uh, obstruction of the common bile duct. And then if that become infected, uh, then you have ascending cholangitis, okay? So if you have a, um, uh, you know, a fistula between the biliary tract, uh, tract and also the GI tract, then you think about gallstone ileus. Uh, basically, the stone, is in, it gets stuck in the GI system now. It's no longer gets stuck in the uh, biliary tract. Now it involves the, the GI system. And again, if that stone gets stuck in the, uh, you know, the uh, place where, the uh, common bile duct and also the pancreatic duct join together. Then you think about the pancreatite, uh, the pancreas uh, become inflamed. Now you have pancreatitis. And then we have the porcelain gallbladder. If you see on a CT, you have a thick uh, gallbladder. Think about porcelain uh, gallbladder that you have to remove it right away. So this is a summary of the four common uh, conditions that involve with the uh, gallstone. Okay, so cholelithiasis. Uh, when you, you know, the clinical symptom is a colicky pain, right? So it come and go, uh, patient eat, you know, they have pain. After that, it's okay, it's gone, okay? So you treat it, uh, you, everything will be built on the uh, right upper quadrant ultrasound. Uh, the treatment is you just, re, you know, elective uh, cholecystectomy, I mean that you, uh, patient can remove it whenever they want to. So it's not an emergency. Uh, it's sort of like, you know, uh, you can recommend the patient to get the gallbladder removed. And then if that stone gets stuck in the uh, cystic duct, now you have the cystic uh, cholis, uh, chol cholecystitis. Now you have the Murphy sign. So it's a constant pain now. It's no longer colicky, okay? Uh, then now you have the positive Murphy sign. Sometimes you have the fever, leukocytosis. Now you need to get the gallbladder to remove. It's no longer elective anymore. Like you, you have to tell the patient you, get the gall you need to get rid of the gallbladder. And then if the, ga uh, if the gall uh, gallstone gets stuck in a common bile duct, now you have a bigger problem now that you get the liver involved, okay? So it's not just the gallbladder now, 
you also have liver. So when you think about liver, become uh, you know uh, involved, and you think about jaundice, uh, and you think about dilated hepatic uh, bile ducts. And at this point, you need to remove the uh, gallbladder. So you need to do a ER, uh, remove the, the stone. So you have to do the ERCP uh, immediately. Same thing, uh, cholangitis. The only different now that you have infections. So when you have an infection, think about a sepsis. So you have hypotension, you have uh, automental status. So that become a, a renal pen tap. And then remember the triad, uh, right upper quadrant uh, pain, fever, and jaundice. Uh, and then this one, you have to remove the stone immediately. Uh, because some patient can die from this. Okay, so management with the gallstones. Sometimes you have gallstone without any symptoms. You know, usually no treatments. Uh, you can tell the patient you can get the gallbladder removed sometime, but it doesn't have to be anytime soon. So it's based on the patient. But if you have a gallstone with typical bilirubic colic symptoms, uh, same thing. You recommend the patient to remove the gallstone whenever they want. Uh, sometimes you can give a, a drug called urso deoxycholic acid. So remember the bio, bio salt. So if you have low amount of bio salt, then you have increasing risk of uh, forming the, uh, uh, the gallstone. So the, you know, urso deocolic acid is sort of like bio salt, replace your bio salt so that it helps the bio to become more uh, water soluble. Um, so that's how it works. And also when you have a complicated gallstone disease, for example, you have acute cholecystitis, colodocolithiasis and gallstone pancreatitis, then you need to get the uh, cholecystectomy. You need to remove the gallbladder within uh, 72 hours. So this is mainly for step two. Um, uh, they're not gonna test you on step one uh, for now. Okay, so uh, that's all we have for the gallstone. Anyone have any questions for now? No question? Okay, so let's do some uh, questions. Okay, so I have some questions. Okay, can you see the screen? All right, so let's do uh, question number one. So let's say you have a 73 years old obese woman present to the emergency department with three days of progressive abdominal pain with recent bilious vomiting. So imaging review, multiple air fluid level in the small intestine and air in the biliary tree. Which of the following is the, di the most likely diagnosis? Is it colon cancer, gallstone ileus, gangrenous uh, cholecystitis, gastroenteritis, and vulvalis? Um, I guess the answer is B. Okay, and can you explain? Um, so uh, imaging reveal multiple air fluid mm -hmm. levels. Yeah. Okay, first um, of all, and also, me, yeah, tell me what the patient has first. Um, I think the diagnosis is Gaston Ileus. Yes, okay. Um, it due to a condition that the patient have uh, like some kind of chronic um, inflammation of the, the, the okay. gallbladder mm -hmm. and that um, it forms a it forms a so, like connection from the, okay. the um, ileum and the gallbladder okay so and the ear in the uh, the, the, the biliary, biliary tree is a uh, Okay. Like the key factor. Where is the stone now? Remember, I uh, tell you yeah. in, in the ileus, okay. ileum. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone else want to give another try? I mean, don't is correct, uh, but I just want you know to give somebody else a chance to answer. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wing Ta, you want to explain it? Why not a? Why not colon cancer? So first of all, uh, tell me, you know, what are the risk factors for the patient to have gallstone? Point out the risk factors. I'm sorry, can you repeat? Okay, so, uh, so don't say it's a gallstone ileus, right? So basically, it's a gallstone that gets stuck in the ileum. Now I want you to go back and tell me what are the risk factors of this question that tell you that the patient have a gallstone? 
um, I, I agree with Tung that that uh, um, So what is, makes you think that this patient have gallstone? What what are the clues in the questions? Um, Do you remember the uh, risk factor for gallstone? The five F. Yes. Uh, she. Okay. What is a five? What are the five Fs? Uh, she has some risk factors. Yes. Yeah. Is the women? Yep, women. Yep, females. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, and uh, she uh, she has, uh, she has uh, obesity. Yeah, obesity. So fat. So female fat. Uh, fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what about the age? Yes. Yeah, okay. She yeah, so these are the questions that they, you know, when you read a question, all, you know, everything there for a reason. So that's why they give you all the risk factors of this patient, okay? She's female, she's fat, you know, and then she's old. Uh, so those are the risk factors for uh, gallstones. So she's have gallstone, and now that gallstone, uh, you know, cause inflammation, and now you have a fistula in the GI tract and the biliary tract. So now she have air in her biliary tree. So you should not see air in the biliary tree. Uh, the only time you see air in the biliary tree is when the air inside the small intestine travel into the biliary tree. So that's why, you know, Tom was right. Gallstone illness is correct. But like step one question, you always have to understand why are the answer, other answers are incorrect. Okay, so why not colon cancer? Someone tell me, what are the signs symptoms of colon cancer? Now, Ban, you want to give it a try? Um, okay. If, uh a patient have colon cancer. Yep. Uh, I, I guess that before uh, we have some symptom related to mm -hmm. uh, cancer, like losing weight, mm -hmm. um, um, fever or something, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, it's caused the obstruction of the colon. Okay. So uh, they so, uh, maybe, exactly. maybe the patient cannot mm -hmm. uh, pass people, and mm -hmm. they they will um, like um, the the. The abdominal, uh, mm. abdomen enlarged because of airs and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yes. basically if you have colon cancer, it's just a GI tract, right? It got nothing to do with the biliary tree, okay? Yes, so only, yes. Yeah, the only time when you have the problem with both is when you have a gallstone inside the ileum. So that's why I meant, you know, so if it's colon cancer, you know, air in the biliary tree doesn't make any sense, all right? So let's go to the venous uh, cholecystitis. So let's let's think about cholecystitis. What is cholecystitis? Uh, cholecystitis is the inflammation of the gallbladder. Gallbladder, exactly. Right. So it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't cause any area in the biliary tree, right? Yes. So I, I forgot yeah. to tell you guys, but uh, gangrenous cholecystitis means that sometimes the gallbladder can inflamed and uh, become infected, and it causes the uh, so gangrenous means that. It's a it's sort of like infection that's have air inside the uh, you know the gallbladder wall, not air inside the biliary tree. So if you if you see air fluid and also air inside the gallbladder, then it's a cholecystitis, a gangrenous cholecystitis. All right. So gastroenteritis. Uh, what is gastroenteritis? Hmm. Uh, yes, a gastroenteritis mm -hmm. is the inflammation maybe due to infection uh, yeah. or. Yeah, autoimmune. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, the uh, uh, gastrointestinal mm -hmm. um, tract. The yeah. So it's the same thing, you know. A, B, and E. Everything has to do with the GI tract. It's nothing to do with the gallbladders. Uh, so that's what, that's all I'm trying to say. Okay. So great job, yeah. Tom. Uh, I think and you answered the question right. All right. All right. So that's the answer. I'm gonna post this online, but you guys answer correctly. Um, so basically, it's a small intestine obstruction with air in the biliary tree point to gallstone ileus. All right, let's do the next question. All right, question number two. Uh, we have an obese, again, 46 years old, multi-paris woman, the percent of physician with a constant, steady right upper quadrant pain, along with nausea and vomiting that began four hours ago. So physical exam, elicit inspiratory arrest with palpitation of the right upper quadrant. La uh, laugh show that she have a white blood cell count of 14.5 thousand uh, erythrocyte uh, sedimentation rate of 40, uh, so basically it's elevated, and serum amylase uh, level of 70, uh, AST, ALT, 
alkaline phosphatase, bilirubin, and lipase are normal uh, within normal limit. So what is the cause of the patient presentations? So infection of the biliary tract, inflammation of the gallbladder, inflammation of the pancreas, obstruction of the ampulla albator, obstruction of the common bile ducts. All right, so I'm gonna pick somebody. Uh, uh, Main, you wanna tell me what does the patient have? Um, my answer is B. B? Okay, so let's walk through it a little bit first, okay? So now, what makes you think that the patient has B? Uh, because um, the, uh, the last one, uh, the last, um, because I asked for a amino transfer, and amino transfer, uh, and alkali phosphate mm -hmm. is in a normal limit, so the mini aricha is normal. Okay, so the biliary tract is normal. Because uh, and I know mm -hmm. alkali phosphate mm -hmm. oh, um, will be elevated in yeah. the uh, situation, the mm -hmm. mini aricha is infected. Okay. And so good. Yeah. I, I, so I like how you use alkaline phosphatase uh, you know, as, a, as a way to sort out this problem because you're right. Anytime when you have a uh, obstruction of the biliary tract uh, or any, you know, uh, slush of the biliary tract, then you have the elevated alkaline phosphatase. Um, so when you think about gallstone problem, right, you have to separate them. Uh, either it involves the hepatic, uh, the liver, or it doesn't involve the liver. So this problem doesn't involve the liver, right? So you come down to either inflammation of the gallbladder or the gallstone just gets stuck in the system, uh, ducts, right? Uh, so what is A? Um, and the patient uh, has so a symptom. is what is the name of a infection of the biliary tract? A uh, conidocal. No. Oh. Remember infection. The only thing that become infected is when the colitis. Yeah. So cholangitis. Okay. So a is cholangitis, right? What is b? Yeah. Uh, cholecystitis. Good. So cholecystitis. C is. Uh, Okay, and D? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just obstruction of the amplivator. So it's most likely it's a, a gallstone pancreatitis, right? And E is a common of the bile duct, common bile duct. There's a name for that. Uh, do I need to uh, give the reason why I picked B? No, you already gave the reason, but I want to know the name. What is the name then for E? Mm. Name of the disease. I know. Obstruction. No. Yeah, the, remember the stone gets stuck in the common bile ducts? What is. What is exactly. So remember, common bile ducts, the common is doco. So just remember, cholidocolithiasis. Okay? All right. So I think you're right. Uh, so, first, when you look at the question like this one, right? When they tell you it's obese, 46 years old, I mean, that's fertile, multiparous woman. I mean that thing, and then what they have is constant, steady, right upper quartan pain. So when you hear the word constant, it's already eliminate uh, the cholelithiasis, which, which means called gallstone only. So now you come down either uh, with a, a stone that gets stuck in the cyst duct. Uh, so that's why uh, B is correct, inflammation of the gallbladder. Uh, same thing, uh, you know. So what is that physical exam? You know, it shows the inspiratory arrest and palpitation, the right upper quartan. That's basically to say that it's a positive Murphy sign, okay? So that's why I, I, I like the idea that you use alkaline phosphatase to help you, okay? So you have normal alkaline phosphatase mean that there's no liver involvement. So now you just think about the stone either gets stuck in the stuck or it just gets stuck in the gallbladder, okay? All right, so you're right. I like that. All right, so number three. Um, so we have a 40 years old obese uh, woman dining at a restaurant and suddenly experienced the right upper quartan pain. Her husband drove her to the uh, closest emergency department and now she developed a low grade fever and chills. Uh, abdominal ultrasound was performed and the result are shown below. Which of the following is a major risk factor for this patient disease? 
All right. So can anyone tell me what does a patient has first? What is the uh, ultrasound show you? Um, the ultrasound seem mm -hmm. to be have stone in the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the risk where is, factor, yeah, where is the stone? Uh, it's like here. Do you okay. see that? No, I don't see it. But uh, what is the white thing? As what is the white thing over there? Is is there like a calcius? Yeah. Um, okay. All right. It's a family of ghost stones. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me just mute somebody. Okay, uh, so the patient have gallstone. All right, so what are the major risk factor for gallstone? Uh, Tom, you want to answer that too, since you already started? Uh, I'm not so sure about this question. Um, so, so what is, you? Uh, okay, so let me give you a tip of tobacco use. Uh, whenever you hear the tobacco use, it usually means cancer. Man. Step one. If I, if I get to pick A, I'll pick uh, Okay, so I tell C. you the patient is obese, right? The A make any sense? Anorexia, what is anorexia? It's like, um, it's like, uh, it's like you eat a lot and uh, you want to vomit a lot because yeah, you don't want so, to gain weight. So how does old people look? They might look obese. <laughs> they might look obese, but they're not obese, right? Yeah. Yeah, and what about the age? Does that tell you that the age tell you anything? And why would she be dying in a restaurant, right? <laughs> yeah, the age doesn't make any sense because those, those usually in teenagers. Okay, what about lack of dietary fibers? What condition that you think might be associated with lack of dietary fibers? Colon cancer. Okay, what else? Not not much of colon cancer, but what you think an old person come in and you know he hasn't eaten any uh, dietary fibers? What is Const constipation? Yeah, constipation. And what what's the problem when you have chronic constipation? Think. What happened when you have constant pressure? You know, press it on the the colon. It form a pouch, right? What do you call a pouch in the colons? Like a pouching of the colon? Polyp. Polyps and what else? Um, uh, um, Remember uh, left, left lower quotient pain in old person? It's a, it's a begin with a D. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's diverticulitis. Yeah. Diverticulosis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you, how do you call diverticulosis in Vietnamese? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Anyone knows? Anyone know? Oh, okay. What was that? I'm sorry. Tui <laughs> thừa. okay. All right. So it's probably not that, right? Okay. So what about C, multiparity? Just very lightly because yeah. that relates to high cholesterol yeah. level in um, many um, what, years what? yeah what what so hormone that, excuse me what hormones uh, what hormones um, causes the high um, cholesterol in female um, um uh, uh, estrogen yep estrogen right so that's what we talk about so uh, remember the 5f so female fertile right so let me just show you the again so fat fertile female 40s and fibrates so same thing, this one is multiparous, uh, basically it's pregnancy. So she have uh, multiparous, what does multiparous mean? You play a long time. Uh, sorry, I can't hear both of you at the same time. That means you pregnant uh, many times, like uh, over yeah, twice. Exactly, okay, so it just, you know, you're pregnant, so, so associated with pregnancy. So again, you know, uh, diet does, doesn't really play a role in it. It's more more of like you know colorectal cancer, more of the uh, diverticulitis, uh, uh, diverticulosis, uh, and rapid weight loss does actually have effect on the uh, gallstone, but it's not as much as the 
estrogen's uh, role in gallstone. Okay, so just remember those five Fs. So, you know, female, fertile, uh, fat, uh, and you know, um, the fibrates, and also old age. All right, so let's do question four. Uh, so we have, again, uh, these questions are easy because I'm trying to reinforce, uh, you know, the learning that we talk about. So it's a 45 years old obese woman again uh, with hypertension and dyslipidemia. Uh, present to her physician with one day history of severe right upper quadrant pain, nausea and vomiting. She is diagnosed with cholelithiasis and a cholecystectomy is performed. Which of the, uh, her medication is most likely to cause uh, cholelithiasis? So this one is easy if you remember the 5F. Right. Hmm? Fibrates. Yeah, which one is the fibrates? There's no fibrates on uh, A, B, C, D. I think number C is the answer. Okay. All right, what about A? What is A? We talk about A all the time. Aspirin. Tell me what A, is... Really? I know, but what is a mechanism? What enzyme does it block? You have to know this. Just when, whenever you see aspirin, don't try to tell yourself it's aspirin. Tell yourself it's a COX inhibitor. Remember the enzyme, yes. okay? Yes. Yeah, so COX inhibitors is at that. All right, what about uh, is it my What might you've seen that? Let's go for lisinopril first. Lisinopril. Uh, heart problems. Okay, what enzyme? Okay, so when you learn step one, uh, for the, all the medication, you need to know the enzyme that it blocks, okay? Don't remember the name, remember the enzyme that it blocks. So when I say lisinopril, what enzyme does it block? Converting enzyme. Yeah, so what's the name for it? Um, 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 yeah. What's the this enzyme? Is always in the kidney. Tension. Angiotensin <laughs> converting enzyme. Uh, yeah. angio. So angiotensin converting enzyme, right? So we call it ACE inhibitors, right? So from now on, whatever I ask you a, a medication name, don't tell me what it does, tell me what enzyme it blocks. So that will help you on step one. So when I think of aspirin, I immediately convert it to uh, you know, a COX inhibitor. When I see a lisinopril, I immediately think it's ACE inhibitors. What about pravastatin? Uh, 8MG, um, 8MG blocker. Yeah, great. And what are the side effects for statin? Um, uh, Hepatoxy. Mm -hmm. And what is the um, common? Uh, what other pain? What's, what sort of pain you, a person with, uh, with uh, statin come in and complain? Muscle aches, right? Okay. Yeah, muscle. Yeah, so muscle aches, uh, and do you, do you know why people have muscle aches uh, when they started on, you know, simostatin? It's a little bit more to advanced, but it just helps uh, a little bit. Uh, you can speak in Vietnamese, it's fine. Tell me why. But how? Not sure. <laughs> okay, so I want you to go home and look up uh, Pravastatin and Coenzyme Q. So sometimes people give uh, Coenzyme Q also when people are on Pravastatins. So basically when you put someone on statin, they deplete the Coenzyme Q. So Coenzyme Q is uh, needed for generation of energy for muscle cell. So if they lack of the coenzyme Q, uh, it causes the muscle to become weak. Uh, so that's why sometimes people give coenzyme Q to help patient with uh, muscle ache with, uh, you know, statins medications. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're right. You know, uh, gemfibrozil is also another uh, fibrate. So it's another name for fibrate. Uh, so fibrate causes the hypertriglyceridemia. Uh, it's to help with patient with high uh, triglyceride. Uh, but the side effect is that it increases the cholesterol. And uh, again, increased cholesterol means that it, you, know, you have more chance of forming the cholesterol gallstone. So that's what that patient has, is you have a you know, gallstone. All right. All right, so uh, thank you everyone uh, for coming. I think uh, 